within the heart, there's actually brain cells. And our consciousness, we see as a little ball of light, sits within all those brain cells within the heart. So as we are there, we eventually move up into our head. And so we can see our, our, um, our consciousness that we see out our physical eyes with as residing right in the middle of the brain, right behind the pineal gland. It looks out our physical eyes. It sees the world and us as separate. It is how we have been creating this world up until this point in this duality, us as separate from the world. So we can simply move our consciousness back into the heart space. When we move into the heart space, it is a place where we can go where the ego cannot go. It is a place that we can go where if there is any energetic beings that are with us, they cannot be there unless they are for our highest and greatest goods. The only ones that can be within the sacred space, the heart, are those who walk with us for our highest and greatest goods. And so walking into the sacred space, the heart, is such a huge thing on any work that we do, any major decisions, because the ego cannot be there. Well, any kind of work that you do, whether it's dowsing work, um, whether it's healing work, uh, whether it is sight, anything that you do coming from the heart space is huge. And that is creating this whole new world that we're going to be living in because all sacred spaces of the heart are connected. And as we are creating from the heart space, we are creating this new world where everything is in unity. Um, so to look at this scientifically, the heart is a big electromagnetic generator. So heart math has done all that research showing that um, the heart has this toroidal field, this torsion field, and Patricia said it very well the other day in her speech about the torsion field of the heart. It is a physical place within the heart, not the heart chakra. So we can move our consciousness back into this toroidal field within the heart. So this tube torus goes out about six feet, and heart math has done the research and shows that there is another tube torus, that donut-shaped field, that's only a few inches out, and that is the sacred seat of the heart. So when we move our consciousness down into that sacred space of the heart, a lot of people see it as maybe a small room or a cave. It can be an ocean beach. You just trust what it is that you see within the sacred space of the heart. Within the sacred space of the heart, there's a place you settle your consciousness down onto, and that is the sacred seat of the heart. That is that tube torus within the tube torus. That is that uh, Drunvalo Melchizedek was the one who originally was bringing all this stuff through uh, from his guides Thoth. Um, when my sister channels an energy group called the Elders Three. The Elders Three are three indigenous women who are here to assist everyone into bringing together the divine, feminine, and masculine. They bring all these simple, easy techniques that are self-empowering that anybody can do. So the Elders Three are the ones who, for us, brought this knowledge through about doing this Trinity breath, about breathing in from the earth and the sky, bringing both those energies together with you, earth, sky, and you, that is the Trinity. You are grounded, you are connected, and you are here in this physical plane. And you do that Trinity breath before you drop into the sacred space of the heart. So it's a really simple technique, and we only have a couple minutes here, so I'd love to walk you guys all into the sacred space of the heart. The sacred space of the heart is the place that is so very important. It's more important than activating Merkaba fields. It is the basis to any work that anybody should be doing is from the heart space because whether it's creating or anything. So to walk into the sacred space of the heart, again, we see our consciousness as that little ball of light, that marble that sits right in the middle of the brain. And we're just going to drop that down into the heart space. So if you all would, um, just close your eyes and just breathe normally and just be comfortable. We'd like for you to picture yourself standing on your favorite spot in nature, that place on this earth where you're the most in love with Mother Earth, with Gaia. And as you are standing in your favorite spot in nature and you're sending your love to the earth, she sends her love right back up. So breathe that energy, that unconditional loving energy up into the feet and just breathe that up into the heart center, allowing it to flow all through the body. This is a healing, healing energy. Next, we're gonna connect up with source, creator, God, central sun, whatever you call the higher power. 
We're gonna breathe in that unconditional loving energy down into the crown and breathe that right into the heart center as well. And as we breathe in that into the heart center, we're gonna take one more breath of both earth and sky and we're gonna mix both those energies together with you, earth, sky, and you. Again, this is the Trinity. This is a very powerful being that you are, grounded, connected, and here. Now just continue to breathe in from earth and sky, and we're going to visualize that little ball of light or consciousness that sits right in the middle of the brain. Take in that deep breath from earth and sky, and as you exhale, drop yourself right down to that sacred space of the heart, and just drop into that heart. Now take a look around and trust what you see. And if you don't see anything, just feel. Feel the difference of being in the head and the heart. Now we're gonna find a seat to sit on. This could be a pallet of furs, a pile of sand, a throne, whatever it is, just trust what you see there. And just settle yourself right on that sacred seat of the heart and just sit down. Now let's take a quick journey right back up into the head again. We'll come back here. So just move your consciousness right up into the head again and just feel that difference. Feel what it's like to be up there in the head versus the heart. Now again, as we breathe in from earth and sky, mixing those together with you, exhale and just drop straight down to that sacred space of the heart again and just settle into that sacred seat of the heart. This is the place where you can access your Akashic records. This is the place where you can access all that you are. It is a place where you can connect with your guides, only those who walk with you for your highest and greatest good. You can get your answers. If you can see your guides, start asking them questions. They may shake their head or nod or just tell you to figure it out yourself. But uh, just use this heart space. It is, a, it is really a big thing to do in our daily lives. You can enter the heart space before you go to bed at night to help you sleep better so your mind is not always chattering. You may pop out of the heart space. We, it, is, it is a tough thing to live within the sacred space of the heart. Somebody cut you off in traffic, you may pop out of there. But it is so easy to get back into the heart space. The more you exercise this, so do this first thing in the morning when you wake up before you set your intentions because intention setting from the heart space as we are creating this new world from the heart is a huge thing. All right, thank you. And if you'd like to uh, revisit this whole process, our website is twistedsage.com and we have the transcripts and a video there and the longer version of doing the Trinity Breath which you get to go to Star Lake and actually go down to visit Gaia. So. Um, please feel free to, to check out our videos there on twistedsage.com. Thank you. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. So it is fun to live from the heart space, but be sure to send your roots down into the ground, get yourself back into the body again. Um, you can certainly learn to, to be in both at the same time. So. Thank All right. you for that, Brian. Thank you. You're wonderful. Thank Would you, you give us a quick thing of why you wear so much copper? Oh, yes. Um, I, I create the tensor tools which um, help to, one, they work with water very well. They raise the frequency and vibration of water so much that it becomes lighter in weight in the laboratory. There's a lot of science behind the tensor fields. Um, it restructures electromagnetics and it connects up with the spiritual aspect of water which we call Hedica, the water elemental of earth which is older than the earth. And so Hedica, the water spirit, you can connect up with these tools and speak directly to it to create healing elixirs with your water. Um, I also wear them all because they are connecting your higher soul self um, and all of your soul aspects are brought in. Uh, the Council of Light works through these things. You can use them as a flashlight for healing, clearing, manifesting. Um, Do you sell those? Do you bring any? Yes, um, actually I'm set up upstairs with a, um, a chamber 
this ascension chamber does uh, unlocking of DNA, uh, connects to your star family to assist in that DNA unlocking. Um, it connects up to your soul group. Um, it does some really wonderful, wonderful things all within eight minutes. Uh, activates all your Merkaba fields. So the tensor fields are a fantastic thing. We mentor people on how to create these tools because uh, it needs to be out into the world. So. It, well, you don't. You need to be yeah. out in the world, doesn't he, ladies? <laughs> well, thank you. This is wonderful. Thank you for that presentation.